the resources would be a good thing because if we get people to watch this interview who are on the fence, we should give them some breadcrumbs. So let me give a few resources. Um, maybe not breadcrumbs. You know, maybe maybe steak, steak, steak crumb, beef jerky. Yeah, know. that's a that's a terrible <laughs> analogy. <laughs> we, we need a new one. Uh, yeah. So there's the Type One Grit page on Facebook. That's got a lot of you know we post a lot of uh, uh, people's experiences, and we post a lot of the scientific literature. Which to me, you know, again, it's bizarre. You've got the the practitioners on the one hand telling people to run high and fill your state your your plate with starch, but then they they also publishing journal articles which should alarm you if you're getting the results that they're prescribing. But it's bizarre. So and we publish in a lot of literature and links to that literature, you know, trying to trying to point people in the right direction. This then there's the Diabetes University YouTube page. That's 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 and Bernstein then, stuff. Yeah, and okay. then um, you know the Bernstein stuff is not always completely practical because it's tough to see how. So we what we do is we worked with um, Dave's published some literature with Westman and um, Dr. Eric Westman. And Dr. Eric Westman has these uh, has Adapt Academy, so he invited Dave to make a course on type one diabetes. And we've touched on some of the little details and you can see that there's a, you know, besides the low carb, there's a lot to it. And Dave and, and myself and my wife, Roxanne, who's a psychologist, we cover the whole in the, in the class, like a hundred bucks. We cover everything, how to do everything. Dave talks about how you do high school athletics. My wife talks about how you, you do, um, uh, you know, how do you get the whole family on board from a psychology perspective? I talk about the physics. Um, even my youngest son, he he did a talk on why low carb works, where he fleshed out a lot of the the physics that we're talking about with the peaks. And now he's giving um, he's done research which shows why. This is one last little tidbit that I wanted to mention. There's this new technology called CGM automated loops, where you've got this the CGM and the pump working together to keep your blood sugar regulated. But the people who are pushing these systems, they can't control their blood sugar. Their blood sugars are, are out of control still. And they, they, they're, but they're claiming success because they've got some minor improvements. But there are people in type one grit using these systems and they're getting flat sugars. And so what my youngest son has done with his, his computer modeling is actually built expert systems into his models that show exactly the same results that if you eat high carb foods with these profiles it's impossible to control blood sugars there's a not enough there's too much latency in the system with injected insulin to keep up and to correct and then you you have to be careful because you'll overshoot you know if you give too much insulin but with the low carb physics so it's like a physics based nutritional solution to type one and with automated systems you can get close to saying look we have a, a sort of a mechanical cure in some sense right because all now all this little mini stuff we have to do with dave to keep his blood sugar under control if it was automated uh you wouldn't have to do that now there's a lot of fiddling with the automation that's still taking place but that can be improved and uh, you know, and and you have to always be careful with insulin and stuff. But but people are using these devices and getting flat blood sugars if they eat low carb. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because you know it's almost as like you know with this automated you know CGM sensor with a pump built in, it's almost like you have a pancreas again. You know, you got a functioning pancreas more or less. And you think about people that are not diabetic and huh. what their pancreas is having to do. The jump, the hoops is supposed to jump through with the beta cells and the alpha cells constantly going back and forth. And you're wondering, you know. Is that good for a human over the long term? Now you have, you know, you have obviously you have some non-diabetic, non-diabetic athletes that eat higher carbs, and they seem to be doing pretty well. But the average person, I mean, we look right. at the average person today, and everybody's fat, everybody's obese. Every, I mean, you know, everybody's whatever. They got all kind of health issues, and they probably are, you know, they're they're at very least they're stressing out their pancreas. You know, they're probably running hyperinsulinemic, as we know, uh, and and I mean, th there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from these type one diabetics. Yes. You know, and extrapolate it to the to the to the to the quote unquote healthy population or the 
I don't even know if I want to call them healthy, but the average population, which is not healthy. So it's fascinating right. to see that where, where that, uh, where that goes. Unfortunately, the other- the, those systems that we're talking about, which they're, they're being pushed as, you know, you can relieve the burden, um, sort of ignore your condition and, Without a dietary emphasis, yeah. you've got a machine that's going to plug you with shitloads of insulin while you go off. And so, you know, you, you, you your blood sugar is still not going to be controlled and you're going to become a fat type two on top of it. You're going to have double diabetes, which is like if I asked you 10 years ago, what's double diabetes? You'd be like, I don't know. Right. But yeah. now it's it's commonplace. Yeah. So yeah, they're running. So they're taking so much insulin that they become more insulin resistant and then it, and it just snowballs and you got to take more because you're in huge, resistant. huge doses. Yeah. Un, it's unbelievable. You know? Yeah. It's amazing. And, and, and you, you touched on this, you know, the, 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 the American Academy of Pediatrics now recommendation for putting 12 year old kids that are obese on Wagovi and some of these other, you know, GLP one agonists. And it's the same mm-hmm. thing. They're still eating crap. Just here, just take an injection. You can still eat your crap. Um, I mean, they, they give lip service. I mean, what they do is they, oh, well, you know, intensive diet and, and nutrition, but then they never follow up on that. What does that mean? Eat the food pyramid, which no one can do. No one does. No one, you know, it's, it's, yeah. And still just, they emphasize protein foods. It's total lip service and they won't do it. They, they'll give you the dry chicken breast, but the right advice for a type one parent or a type one anyway, is to make your meals in almost or entirely emphasized on protein foods. Yeah. If you do that, you can control your blood sugar and you're going to thrive. But this idea that you should still be dividing your plate up and watching your saturated fat, it, it is the dumbest idea in the history of nutrition. And if you're a type one diabetic, it's going to kill you. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair statement. I think that's, that's good to see. There's something called the Warsaw formula, which I'm sure you're familiar with. It talks about dosing for not only just protein and fat um do you do you have any concerns about fat dosing for fat or does that is that just a free we don't care about fat so the the, those kind of formulas never work they they don't work for a lot of reasons but the main reason is if you include rapid acting carbohydrate in your meal then you lose you lose control you go back to it's a phase transition back to this stochastic Mm -hmm. system so you know that kind of formula is never going to work is the kind of idea that gets supplanted in physics by the correct idea. Unfortunately, with this in this field, there's no feedback mechanisms amongst the practitioners to overcome this inertia that exists. With basal insulin, what you what you can see is that because the the insulin that's provoked by dietary fat is so small and occurs over such a long period that you can't use even this longer intermediate acting insulin to cover it. What you can do is use different basal doses. And I'll give you a great example. If, if Let's suppose that Dave comes home and he's like, oh, we had a uh, unexpected basketball practice and we ran suicides for like a, two hours and I had a light lunch. You know, it's going to be it's going to be hard for me to get enough dinner into his belly to cover that insulin sensitivity. And and I've already dosed his basal dose. So I've already made the decision to dose his metabolic profile for that day based on the fact that he wasn't going to do this suicide drills or or have a light lunch. So now what do I do? If I don't do anything at dinner time, he's going to go low at night because that basal insulin that's still on board is going to be working in a system when he's stu- still insulin sensitive. So what I do is I make a recovery shake, which consists of about four or 500 calories of heavy cream. And that insulin that's free in his system, you know, and that's it, all like, if you think about it, it's like how lipogenesis works. That insulin that's in the system will be supported by that saturated fat from the heavy cream shake. And that works like a charm. And so Typically, what we've always done in athletic seasons is he comes home and I say, have you worked out hard, medium, or not at all today? And I'll gauge his recovery shake based on that. So dietary fat lives in the basal. That's the signal that you see. And um, this is, again, one of those things that you won't notice if you're on the roller coaster from carbohydrates. You'll never detect such a signal. But if you are living in this low-carb world where everything you do you know, if Dave wakes up and he's 83 and he does 50 push-ups, his, I'll see his blood sugar go up. 
right? Because of the ad- adrenaline response mm-hmm. from from doing that heavy lifting or whatever. So any anyhow, yeah, dietary fat, we see it in the basal signal, right? If if if, if you go on a diet or you fast, what happens? You stop your dietary and you're low carber. You're not taking any fat. What happens? Your insulin level goes down, right? And then if you so yeah. that that's kind of how it works. Yeah. 